There has never been a better time to start metal casting, and it's easier than you think. YouTube is full of videos of people making really cool things. Uh, they're fun to watch, but they're kind of intimidating, right? If you think about doing any of that stuff, you might not even know where to start. Uh, I feel ya. I, I used to feel that way, and I still do. All the time. But here's the secret. You can do any of those things. Uh, you just need a starting point and a push in the right direction. If you want to make stuff by casting metal, you're going to need some metal, the right metal, and a way to melt it. That's a good place to start, and I got you covered. I'll show you where to get those, and then I'll make a cool Bronze Age cast spear to uh, show you how they work. Sound good? First, you need something that gets really hot. Here is a new electric furnace by Vivor. I gotta clear my bench. They just released this thing. It's a kit with like everything you need. The furnace, two crucibles, tongs, leather gloves, whole thing. I love these things. I have the old version and it works great. This one is quite different. Let me show you. All right, so the controls look exactly the same. On off switch, the fuse. It's got this shell over the outside though that'll help you not get burned. That's nice. The outside definitely gets toasty hot. Handles are different. There's a big cooling fan on the back. That might help that, that, uh, that safety not get triggered so much. The other one didn't have that. There is a fan inside the other ones. I've taken the other one apart. Maybe I'll take this one apart too, just to see what we got inside there. I also see the little vent hole is covered up with a ceramic wool feeling thing. And that's sure different. This has exposed elements. I think the old one was, it was sealed away. You couldn't see it and they were wrapped like this. These ones are exposed and they're vertical. So this isn't just the same furnace with a new shell. It looks like the element, which is the most important part, is different. The power rating is different as well. I'm gonna see if it heats up. I'm gonna see if it'll melt bronze anyway. Um, the controls are the same. Uh, everything else looks different. All right, interesting. So I took the bottom off. Here's what that board looks like. And here's the board in the other one. I know it's kind of hard to tell. They, they don't look that different. They're definitely like the same kind of model. They look slightly different like this. It could just be this one's covered and this, this whole deal is open. But you know, on the other hand, this has wiring coming out of it and plugging into a thing. And this doesn't have any wiring coming on. There isn't a plug there. There aren't plugs there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's different. Like these, these two plugs don't exist on the other board, at least not in that location. So yeah, that means, that means it's not just a reskin. All, pretty much every part is different. I mean, I assume like the thermocouple is probably the same and the element, ooh, actually I should get, I should get my meter out. Hold on. This furnace has a different power rating than the other one. The other one, I tested the other one when it was brand new. Elements change over time as they get used up, and this one's been, this one's been used a lot. Uh, but the element tested on the other one at nine ohms, and I wrote that, I wrote that down. So I know what it was when it was new. Let's see what this one tests at. It tests at meter can't make up its mind. 11, 11.8? You can see now why I stopped using this meter, because this, this thing just, it wouldn't give me a, a solid reading, so I, it got demoted from, from work truck meter to garage meter. So yeah, nine, nine ohms that one, when new, almost 12 for this one. So this one is a less powerful uh, furnace, but the, the elements are exposed, so it could be more effective. And that hole in the top is covered over, so it might be able to give you the same amount of heat uh, in, in the crucible with less, uh, less energy going in. But I'm definitely gonna try to melt some bronze with it right away. Cause I have heard some people with these ones have trouble getting it to melt bronze, even though it, it should be able to do it, no problem. And mine does it just fine. Now the metal. I made a video a while back showing you why the right metal is so important. Most people start with scrap, which is free, but at best it's dirty and contaminated, and at worst it's the wrong alloy, totally wrong. Your projects are gonna come out looking really bad, and you don't want that, right? That's because not all metals are casting metals. So what is a good metal, and where do you get it? This is my favorite casting metal. It's called ZA12. It's a zinc aluminum alloy. You can use this for investment casting, die casting, sand casting. Everything you see flashing in front of you right now are castings that I've made in ZA12. This metal. It's phenomenal stuff. It's affordable, it flows nicely, it's pretty strong, it melts at a low temperature, so it's easy to melt. It's just good stuff. And until now, it's only been available in these big honking ingots. These are kind of difficult to use for a reason I'll show you later. To solve this problem, I reached out to rotometals.com. Not a sponsor, but they are awesome. Uh, and I asked if they would be willing to sell them in slightly smaller home hobbyist size ingots that we can actually use more easily. And the owner, who was super awesome by the way, I uh, said, yeah, let me see what I can do. And boom. Starting now, he's offering a box full of this size ingot that's much more manageable. And it even comes with free shipping, even though it's well below the $150 threshold they usually have for free shipping. If you've been watching my recent projects, this is enough to cast the Gingri lathe bed that I just made. It will not do a lathe bed in two feet. You need two of these boxes for that. I'm gonna stack these things up. They look really cool. I'm gonna stop with a straight pyramid. It comes with more than this. There's a couple more. 
I can't stress enough how much of a massive help this is for us home metal casters. We can now buy this excellent casting metal, which comes clean and in sizes that are usable for an off-the-shelf furnace like I just showed you. Check it out. Okay, here's where these new ingots come into play. Here's one of the old ingots, the giant four-pounder ones, and here's one of the new ones quite a bit smaller. Here's where it's important. This is the largest crucible that comes with these kits, the largest one. Here's the big ingot. There is just no way that's ever gonna fit in there. You'd have to rip the thing in half and then cut the thing in half lengthwise and it's, it just, no, it just ain't gonna work. And now the smaller new ones fits right in and has wiggle room. And that's important because this stuff will expand when it's heating up and you don't want it to expand and break your crucible, right? It's got plenty of room. This means you don't have to build a huge furnace to melt these giant things down into small ingot sizes just so you can make small things. I've even tried cutting these things in half to fit them into my gigantic furnace. They gum up cutting discs. It's really difficult to cut that thing in half. It would be easier to cut a brick of steel in half. Now I don't have to. I got these. Now before I move on, I know what you're thinking. But zinc fumes are poisonous. Yes. Yes they are. And anybody who welds galvanized steel or melts brass will get a whiff of it, and it's probably not fun. I get comments about this all the time. Chill out. Welding galvanized steel and melting brass, which has a lot of zinc in it, both happen well above zinc's boiling temperature. It boils off, it hits the air, the oxygen, it oxidizes into a white powdery fume that gets you sick. Because these things fit inside that little electric furnace, you can control the temperature much better and you will never get this stuff anywhere near the temperature that zinc will boil. I shoot for around 500 Celsius when I pour. At 800 Celsius, which I've also tried, you still don't get any of the white fumes coming off these things. At 500, you definitely don't. You should be in a well-ventilated area anyway, like a garage. Good rule of thumb, don't cast metal anywhere you wouldn't weld metal. You're not gonna weld metal in your bedroom, right? unless you're into some really weird stuff. No judgment, just don't do it. I'm out in a garage, There's, it's drafty, there are fans and stuff. Be careful, the heat can hurt you. You don't have to panic about the zinc fumes. Okay, enough jibber jabber, let's make something. In the past, I've made a bunch of these. This is a spear point made from a 3D scan of an artifact. You can find the scan in my mini factory, just look up Bronze Age spear, it'll probably look like this one. There's other spears from the same dig, the same archeological site, that show a ring back here, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, but it's, you know, they're artifacts, so they're kind of they're kind of lumpy and cruddy looking. So I took the rough dimensions and 3D modeled up a new one uh, with a little more stout ring here on the bottom. The STL for this, the file, will be on my mini factory. I'll link it below. It's free. Enjoy. Try making it yourself. These were 3D printed. Uh, 3D printing is a great way to make tools and patterns, by the way, for metal casting. You can make stuff out of wood too. Anything you can 3D print, you can probably carve out of wood. But 3D printers are becoming so common and they're super fast and they're very accurate. I mean, especially the new ones. Having one of these, it's almost like a cheat code for like saving time, like a time cheat. And anything you can print, you can probably cast in metal using some technique. They are super awesome. Preparing a 3D print is a lot like preparing a wood pattern too. You can do nothing, like here, or you can sand it, spray filler primer, sand again, spray a top coat. You can get something really smooth. The smoother it is, the smoother the final casting is going to be. I'm going to do both, one on each side. I'm making this spear by sand casting. Uh, the original were probably made vertically in like a carved soapstone mold or something, but sand casting is a fantastic place to start, especially if you're new to metal casting. You can make awesome big things, and the equipment is cheaper than other forms of casting. Some of it you can even make yourself, like the box, the flask is called, you can see in this video. If you want to get started sand casting, especially if you already have a 3D printer, I have an online course I will link below. It will help take you from a complete newbie to high quality successful castings quickly with personal help from me. I mean, it's not just a bunch of videos. I will personally help you, like an instructor in an in-person class. One of the students just posted a really cool Megalodon tooth. He cast in bronze using a fossil he found as a pattern. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Anyways, back to the spear. The, the mold is ready. It's time to put the ingot in the furnace, turn it on, get melting. And I'm only gonna use one of these things. Just one, because one of these goes a really long way. Okay, same controls as the old one. Go! Going to 500 Celsius. That's a fair starting point uh, for pouring this ZA12. And now we wait. Pro tip, real quick, when the display says it's up to 500 Celsius, let it sit there for like 15 minutes. The metal inside the crucible will, will lag a bit. It might not be up to temperature yet. Okay, tip over. Nice and liquidy in there. 
The tongs and these little graphite crucibles are super nice to pour. I really like them. I, I honestly, I like them better than like the giant tongs that I built in the huge graphite clay crucibles. It's, it's super easy to handle these things. Let it sit a few hours, overnight ideally, or you know, an hour and a half or less if you're impatient like me. Another copy of that original one. Gonna have to, gonna have to excavate my new one. See if that actually came through. Hey, look at that. It did indeed fill the whole ring and, and a bit of the vent. And I got another one and the spin trap and the pouring basin. And one of those ingots really goes a long way, doesn't it? You, th you, might, you might think, you might think like one pound isn't a lot of metal. It's a lot of metal. And you can kind of see up close, this was the side I cleaned up. You have a clear sandy texture. And on the other side, layer lines. So even if you don't want to clean off the layer lines on the print, uh, you know, it's not that bad. It's just as bad as the layer lines are on the print, that's just how they're going to look on the cast. But still, looks looks pretty cool. It's definitely spectacular, if I do say so myself. Now I'm going to clean this thing up. I'll see what we got afterwards. If you do this right, your casting will have a light sand texture on it. You might not even have to clean that off if you like the look. You can treat this just like polishing up anything. Progressively higher and higher grits. I think I started at 100, 120. Went in steps up to 400 with the sander, 600 by hand. Then I jumped straight to the polishing wheel on a Dremel. Just the, the stuff that comes with the Dremel kits. I skipped some stages, but I think the results speak for themselves. Ooh, well that's shiny shiny. Can seriously never get a good camera shot of something this shiny. The, the light just messes with the camera so bad. Other side's easy though. See that? We got layer lines and sand and... Oh no, the camera's freaking out. And it's got fingerprints on it. Does it even need a mirror finish? I mean, shiny is better, obviously, but eh. And if you're wondering if this furnace can melt bronze, uh, of course it can. I tried. This is uh, ancient bronze. So this is 90% this is copper, 10% tin. It's similar to the alloy that would have been used back in the bronze age. This furnace, despite being a lower power rating, actually melts bronze faster than my other one. I think it's because of the exposed elements. There's there's less blocking the radiant heat from heating up the crucible, but I'm not an engineer. So there you go. Here's where you can start and consider this me pushing you forward in that direction. I'll put links to all this stuff down below as usual. And if you want more than a push, check out my sandcasting course. It's not just a push in the right direction. Uh, it'll get you started on the right foot in a dead sprint. I may be torturing this metaphor a little bit. See you next time.